We present a method for refocusing images and videos of dynamic scenes using a novel, single-view depth estimation technique. Our method for obtaining depth is based on the defocus analysis of a grid of dots projected onto the scene. In contrast to other active illumination techniques, the projected dot pattern can be removed from each acquired image. Then the depth map and the dot removed image are used to refocus the scene and produce realistic depth of field effects. Here we see the scene rendered with a wide aperture lens and with the focal plane moving from front to back. The refocusing can also be applied to an image taken immediately before or after under different lighting. To handle live action scenes, the depth set all image pixels need to be estimated from a single acquired image. To this end, we have designed an imaging system consisting of a wide depth of field camera and a narrow depth of field projector that are co-located using a half mirror. Our approach is to project a grid of dots onto the scene and determine the scene depth corresponding to each dot based on the degree of its defocus. Although the shape of a projected dot in the scene depends on the local surface geometry, it remains circular when it is viewed by the co-located camera. The defocus characteristics of the projector are measured using a simple offline calibration procedure. The grid of dots is projected onto a calibration board. The board is swept through the working range of the system and a sequence of images is captured. The appearance of the board under ambient lighting is also recorded. This is a one-time calibration. The same set of calibration images are used to estimate dot depths for arbitrary scenes. Given the image of a scene lit by the dots, the degree of defocus for each dot is determined by comparing it with the dots in the calibration images. By taking the appropriate ratios of brightnesses, we are able to remove the dots from the acquired image as well as estimate their depths. This results in a sparse depth map of the scene. To obtain a complete depth map, we use a segmentation-based approach. First, we apply the mean shift algorithm to over-segment the dot-removed image. Next, the previously computed sparse depth map is used to fit a surface to each image segment. The segments are then iteratively merged based on depth similarity. Finally, more precise depth estimation near discontinuities is obtained using a matting technique. The acquired image can now be refocused with different focal plane and aperture settings by convolving each pixel with a blur kernel whose size is proportional to the pixel's depth. Here we see the virtual focal plane being moved from the front to the back of the scene. We can also fix the focal plane and simulate changes in aperture size. Here the focal plane is placed in front of the scene. Now the focal plane is placed on the background. Our refocusing algorithm takes into account partial occlusions that arise at object boundaries. This produces more realistic depth of field renderings compared to existing approaches. Here we show the continuous refocusing of a scene with a statue produced by our algorithm. Here we see a magnified region of the refocused scene, where the virtual focal plane is located behind the background. Here are the results obtained using Photoshop's Lens Blur tool and the Iris Filter tool. If we compare these results with a real image of the scene taken with similar optical settings, we can see that our refocusing algorithm produces more realistic depth of field effects, in particular around the boundary of the statue. We now show refocusing results obtained by applying our method to several other scenes. In this example, the scene has four distinct layers, the ball, the hand, the face and body of the person, and the background. Notice how each scene element goes in and out of focus. In this scene, the pool table has a depth gradient, while the hand, the pool cue, and the balls have different, but more or less uniform depths. The image on the right was taken immediately after the one on the left, under different lighting. In this case, the sparse depth map computed from the acquired image and a segmentation of the new image are used to compute the depth map of the scene. Here we show refocusing applied to the new image. In the refocusing of this scene with a person standing behind a fence, the focal plane is continuously moved from front to back. One can see the subtle depth of field effects produced by the fence. We now fix the focal plane on the person and vary the size of the aperture. Since our method only requires the acquisition of a single image, it can be directly used for refocusing videos of dynamic scenes. Here we show the acquired video of a scene with milk being poured from a jar into a cup. In the refocused video, the focal plane remains fixed on the jar, while the jar moves through the scene. We can freeze the video and control the depth of field as desired. This example shows a scene with three real balls in front of a poster with an image of tennis balls. 
In the refocused video, the focal plane remains fixed on the real tennis ball as it rolls toward the camera. Again, we can freeze the video and change the depth of field. In our last example, we show a close-up scene with hands holding a set of playing cards. This example shows how one can draw the viewer's attention to the hands by focusing up close, or to the cards in the background by moving the focal plane back. Our refocusing method enables a photographer or a cinematographer to make these choices after the scene has been acquired.